Hey Raptors, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. It really means a lot to us. Hey, today we are gonna learn how to test ProgPal in 2020. Let's jump right in, here we go. Okay guys, so we've talked quite a bit about ProgPal here on the channel. We're not gonna do a deep dive on why it's important, even though we really think that it's pretty important for the future of GPU mining. We've got Zcoin looking at adopting it. Make sure that their community hears back from you if this is something that you're interested in. We've got Ravencoin looking to add it to their algorithm rotation. And then we've got Ethereum looking to incorporate this as part of their Berlin fork that's coming up, I think somewhere around the middle of the year. Now that being said, let's learn how to test our hardware out. Let's see how it compares with other hardware that's out there. Most importantly, let's provide some information back to the community. Uh, right now, the projects that are considering moving to ProgPal need your help. They need your feedback, they need data to understand how this algorithm is going to work and how well it's gonna run on hardware that's already out there in the wild. So we need your help, we need your feedback. My hope is to get a quick video out just to help the cause. That's really it, to sort of consolidate this information and get the community focused on this and make it a little bit easier to understand the resources that are available for testing. Okay, so let's jump right in. I put together some instructions here. Okay, I'm gonna put these instructions in the description of this video, but also this is in my Discord. So there's an invite to Discord in the description below. And here in the ProgPal channel, you'll see here's a video that I posted here at the top if you wanna get a little bit more information on why ProgPal is important. And we're gonna have some more videos like that coming soon. But to get to testing, I've posted a little cheat sheet here. And this is pulled from information from GitHub, some conversations from around the web, and uh, just a few recommendations that I have as well to help you make this go pretty easily. Now, it's really just a couple simple steps if you wanna test out your hardware and see how it stacks up. So to get right to it, what is the first thing you do? So we're just gonna follow these instructions. We need to download the ProgPal Fminer 0.9.3 release. And you can do that from this link that's right here. And that's gonna take you to this GitHub page. And what you're gonna to wanna to do when you're here is go to the releases tab if you're just put up a Windows build for us, or if you're on Linux, you can test there as well. For me, I'm on Windows, I need the CUDA 10 release. So I'm just gonna download that. Okay, so we've got our download. I'm gonna unzip this and I extract all, and I'm just gonna put this into a ProgPal test folder. And there we go, we've got a bin folder. And if I open that, you'll see a couple things here fminer.exe and then a couple DLLs. And so our miner that we're wanting to test is fminer.exe, but we need to follow a few other steps here first before we run anything. Now, if you look over here, there's a little bit of information on how to run this. And for example, you'll see a specific block height that's called out. And the reason for that after doing some investigation is, as it turns out, if you're not testing against the same block height, you can actually get varied results amongst different hardware. And we wanna to try to standardize as best we can to understand what kind of performance we're getting. So the block height that was provided is 7,169,430. And if we take a look where we are today, let me refresh this. We are at block 9,481,000. Now there's some interesting things about this. If we look at the DAG size calculator, and I'll leave links to all of this in the description below. Right now we're under that four gig limit, and you can see that we're gonna hit that four gig threshold for the DAG size. It says here around December 26, 2020. Now that being said, if you want to test a block height above this four gig DAG size that's gonna place you there so you're testing testing above that four gig DAG size. We need to pick something above 11,519,000. So I'm gonna suggest that we go with block height. So 
So let's test at 11,600,000. Again, just so that we're all on the same page here. Really doesn't matter to me what we use. I'm just throwing this number out there. We've got till 2024 before we have to worry about any of our six gig cards. And most of these cards, probably you've got a good lifespan of about two to three years. If you get more than that, I think you're in a bonus. <laughs> but uh, two to three years is probably a good expectation for lifespan on these cards. I've heard people getting a lot more than that, but I, I don't know, that's kind of what I aim for. And then somewhere probably around that two year mark, even if they're running fine, it's more about keeping the resale value. Sell it while you've got some resale value. So I kind of aim for about two, two years. Okay, so what I'm gonna suggest is if you wanna test above that four gig DAG size file, let's do 11,600,000. Okay, now that we've got this extracted, and we've got it in our test folder, there's a couple simple things we need to do. You may need to add some antivirus exceptions for Fminer to run, and I'm not a coder. I have not inspected this code. I trust the people that are creating it, but that's just my personal decision. So always do your own research, run things at your own risk. The other thing you wanna do is get, with all as many applications closed as you can, get your idle wattage from the wall. Uh, that way you've got your starting point, and make sure you set the overclock settings, or at least the starting point for your overclock settings, so you can work up or down from there. So for this test, I'm gonna fire up GPU Z. We are going to get our driver wattage here. And this is the wattage at the card. You need to confirm this against the wall to make sure it makes sense. And I have done that. It's, it's uh, pretty much dead on accurate. And my system's running about 90 watts at the wall idle. So we're gonna take a look at this for this test right here. So we are all set now so that you can run this, there's a couple ways you can do this, but this is just what I'm gonna to do to make this simple. We're gonna create a batch file in case we're gonna run this over and over again. And I'm actually gonna create two just to make my life a little bit easier here. So I'm just gonna copy out that text, that command line right there. And we're gonna come into the directory where we've downloaded the progpal miner. And I'm gonna go new text document. And we'll just call this prog pal test dot bat. We're just creating a batch file here. Okay, looks good. Now we're gonna edit this. And we're just gonna drop this string right here. So I'm gonna save this. And let's test it real quick. All right, there we go. We are mining away. And you can see we're at the proper block height. Our difficulty's been set. And no pull is needed. All right, this is a benchmark utility. And I'll play around with different overclocks in here on the 1660 Super. Look at this, okay, we're at 124 watts. And that's because I'm recording right now. I've got this at full power, but I could bring this down to say, 70%, apply that. And usually, because this is a simulator, no pool needed, within the first 60 seconds, you get some pretty good readings off your card here, if you're not running a whole bunch of applications like I am in the background. So you can test pretty quick and get a pretty accurate reading. So in this case, I probably would have picked a number somewhere around 12.18 mega hash, something in the middle within the first 30 to 60 seconds here. And if you make any adjustments, just close this out and make your overclock adjustments. And then just run it again. If this was the scenario I wanted to test with, I would just grab one of these numbers that looks pretty accurate here within the first little bit of starting my miner here within the first minute of starting my miner. Okay, all right, so now we've tested this initial criteria that was laid out for us. So we've got our block height tested below the four gig DAG file size. Now, so I'm just going to copy this. And we're gonna create a new batch file. I'm gonna paste it and then I'm gonna rename it. 
4 gigabyte DAG. So in this one, we're gonna still do the same testing, but we're just gonna change that DAG file size. And I'm gonna change this to that 11,600,000 number that we've got here. So I'm just gonna grab this, copy. We're gonna paste it in right here. So we've got this block height set, save, and let's try running that. All right, boom, there you go. We are mining. You can see we've got our new block height set. Difficulty's the same. We wanna standardize on as much as possible here. And you can see right here as it was starting out, it generated the DAG. 4.08 gigabytes, but we were wanting to get above anything north of four gigs. All right, there you go. So you can see how that goes. You can run this from the command line, but if you wanna come back to this, test different hardware or do multiple iterations with different settings, um, probably is a little handy to create these batch files here. And then the next thing you wanna do is record your results. And I've got a link here that will take you to this screen. And if this changes, if the area where the community decides to store information changes, I will update the information in this description and on the Discord channel. But for now, this is a form that Greer created a couple months back, but everything looks pretty good to me. The only thing I saw missing from a drop down here unless it's here and I'm not just seeing it, is the 16 series. Uh, in my case, I'll just choose other, and then I'll come down here to the comments and say 1660 super. But you can just drop in the required components here, make sure you get your wattage, and then I go next, and you're gonna record your block height that you're testing at, your hash rate, and then how many watts when mining and then we're gonna submit. Our response has been recorded. Okay, and so if you wanna see other responses with data, the link is in the show notes and on Discord as well in the instructions. And you can come through and browse, manipulate this data however you want to slice it that'll help out the community. It's all uh, here. And like I said, I'll update all of this if there's any changes, but uh, this is what we've got for now, guys. And it is just that simple, guys. I wanted to put this together just because I struggled finding good information on how to test this, what platforms to test in, were there any standards that would help the community, how do we submit information to help the community. So hopefully you guys are inclined to at least submit one result. That would be my re request, that would be my ask of of everyone, including myself, is test something, submit one result, and the reason we're doing that, just as a reminder, is because these different projects, these different development teams need this data, and they need feedback from us to almost as a vote of confidence in ProgPal. So if you would, submit your vote, submit your information to help the community out so they can understand how this behaves on different hardware types, and yeah, I think uh, it's just a real positive thing to do. And, and in the process, it gives you an idea of kind of how your gear stacks up when and if any of these, these coins, these projects move over to ProgPal. Okay, I don't want to run long. That should do it for today, guys. If there's anything I missed, if you've got any questions, comments, leave it in the comment section below. Hit me up on Discord and we will talk to you soon. Okay, thanks so much. Mind the dips, sell the rips. See you, Raptors.